when I start my chapter three questions, I drink really strong coffee that I just made upstairs from Dunkin' Donuts. It's going to get me all hyped up, baby. Woo! Anyway, I accidentally stopped it. Oh, here we are. We're ready to go. Clearly, I had way too much coffee. All right, let's talk about this. This unit's called Eliminate Possibility. So what we want to try to do is try to work on and solve the questions by eliminating things that can't be true. All right, so let's read through this. We got three brothers go according. We got three brothers. They were in, the first one's kind of weird. They're going to buy what they're going to buy is they want to be suave and debonair. So each brother decided to buy a box of candy, and we got tickets. Each brother got a box of candy and tickets. Andy bought honey based candies. So we got Andy's. Let's talk about. Let's just get this down. Andy bought honey based candy. I'm just going to write honey. Uh, Thule bought shoes, so Thule bought shoes, what a dumb name, and Marty bought, <laughs> Marty bought, Marty brought the nuts, Marty brought the nuts, but he didn't because he forgot his nuts, that's just weird, all right, when it came, <laughs> when it came time to leave, each brother grabbed the wrong candy box and ticket envelope. So none of them took the candy or tickets that belonged to themselves, and they took the tickets of one brother and the candy of another. So let's think about what this means. Oops. Let's think about what this means. We got Andy. He either brought Marty's candy or Thule's candy. Tool. Tool bought, brought either Andy's candy, so weird, Andy's candy, or Marty's candy. And that should be a tool, not toot. <laughs> I'm in rare form today. And then we got Marty. <laughs> Stupid question. <laughs> Marty brought Andy's candy. Uh, or way too much caffeine in that coffee. Or Thule's candy. Now, we also have tickets. So if Marty brought if Andy brought Marty's candy, then he must buy must bring Thule's tickets. Because they it said they can't be the same. So he must be Thule's ticket. If he brought Thule's tickets, then he's got to have Mar. If he brought Tool's candy, then he's got to have Marty's tickets. All right. If Thule brought Andy's candy, then he must have brought Marty's tickets. Or if he brought Marty's candy, then he must have brought Andy's tickets. Andy, if Marty brought Andy's candy, then he must have get must have get the tools tickets. And but if he got the tools candy, then he must have brought Andy's tickets. So so far that's what we know. What we know is they didn't bring their own, so they must have brought one of the others candy. And then whatever brother they brought the candy of, they had to buy the the other brother's tickets. So, so far, that's all we know. That's not enough information to solve yet. So, let's see. When it came time to leave, each brother grabbed the wrong candy box and ticket them. None of them took the candy, we already know this, from, that belonged to him. Each took a ticket from one brother and the candy from the other. So, in other words, they didn't take two of the same things from the same brother. Oh, here we go. Andy did not have Marty's candy. So, we know that Andy did not have the nuts. So, let's go. Andy did not have Marty's candy. So, he must have had Thule's candy. And if he had Thule's candy, then he should have had Marty's tickets. So, we know he didn't have Thule's tickets. Now, what did Thule do? Let's see. Well, let's go over to Marty. Because I don't think we can go. I don't know. Based on what we know. Well, all we know is Thule's candies didn't use. And Thule didn't. Well, we don't know anything about here, so we're going to actually have to jump over here, I think, next. And what we know is that Andy brought Thule's candy, so he couldn't have brought that. So Marty could not have brought the Thule's candy, so Marty must have brought Andy's candy. 
and therefore Thule's ticket. Now, if, oh, well, we also know this, by the way, because from this we know this. So, oh, which means we know that he couldn't have bought Andy's candy either. Oh, I guess we could have done it that way. So Thule must have bought Marty's candy and Andy's tickets. So at the end here, we should write this out. Andy had Thule's tickets. And Marty's, oh, no, 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 Thule's candy. And Marty's tickets. Thule had Marty's candy. And Andy's tickets. And Marty had Andy's candy. And Tooley's tickets. All right, that wasn't too bad. All right, let's try, let's go check number two out. All right, let's talk about Penny. But first, some caffeine from our sponsor, Dunkin' Donuts Coffee. Yeah, right, like they're sponsoring me. <laughs> they should be. I spent enough money there. Penny's favorite coin is the dime, as we saw in Chapter 2. Since last saw Penny, she has spent some of her dimes and has acquired some more. She doesn't know how much she has, but she knows she has fewer than 100 coins. So she has fewer than 100 coins. One day she was arranging them on her desk in a favorite way. She found that when she put them in piles of two, there was one left over. When she put those in piles of three, there was also one left over. The same thing happened when she put them in piles of four. Then she tried putting them in piles of five and found there were none left over. How many dimes does Penny have? Now, this may sound like a very tricky question, but it's not. So we know a bunch of stuff. Here's what we know. If she puts it in piles, piles of two, how many did she have remaining? Oops. Remaining. Well, she had one remaining. When she puts it in piles of three, she has one remaining. When she puts it in piles of four, she has one remaining. But when she puts it in piles of five, she has no remaining. Turns out this last one is the most important one right now. This is the one we're going to start with because this is actually the most important piece. The reason it's the most important piece is because... Whatever number of dimes she has, or whatever number of coins she has, it has to be a multiple of five. In other words, it has to end in five or zero. And we also know we have less than 100, oops, not angle, we have less than 100 coins. So, I'm going to start with this idea and say, okay, what could she have? She could have five. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, I'm going to try to get them all on, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, or 95. So one of those is the answer. One of them is going to turn out to be our answer. I'm just getting my calculator up. Now, we've used that information. So, I think what I want to do next is, because the next easiest piece of information is probably this one. The fact that when you put them in piles of two, you'll have a lone number left over, tells us that Whatever number it is, it can't be an even number. Well, if it can't be an even number, I now get to eliminate all the ones that end in zero. 
So I'm going to get rid of this. Remember, this is an eliminating choices. Now, I could have started by writing out all 100 numbers, but then I would have had to just circle all the 95, all the ones with z that ended in 0 and 5. And I think it was easier just to do it this way. So now I've eliminated, I'm down to, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I, I, so I started at 100. The fact that it had to be a multiple of 5 got me down to, what, 20. And now I've eliminated the even, so now I'm down to 10. And again, we're trying to eliminate choices to get to the one possible answer. Okay, so now we've used this. So now I'm going to use the idea that it's a multiple of 3. Now, I have taught you, or I should have taught you in class, that if something is divisible by 3, if it's divisible by 3, you add the digits, Uh, and if that number is divisible by 3, then the whole number is divisible by 3. So let's just see. 5, no. 5 plus 1 is 6. So 3 goes into that, so we, we would never have a remainder. So that we can get rid of that choice. 2 plus 5 is 7. 3 plus 5 is 8. 4 plus 5 is 9. Can't be that one. 5 plus 5 is 10. 6 plus 5 is 11. 7 plus 5 is 12. 3 goes into 12, so it can't be that one. 13 and 14. So we've eliminated that. But we also get more than that. Here's the next thing we get. So we, we eliminate all the ones that are multiples of 3. But now what I want to do is see if I can eliminate anything that we would have a remainder of 1 with. So for example, for example, if I had the number 8, well, if I made it in groups of piles of 2, or in piles of 3, I would go 3, 3, 2. Nope, that wouldn't be work. But let's say I had 7. That would be a pile of 3, a pile of 3, and one more. So the number has to be one more than a multiple of 3. Right? The number has to be a one more than a multiple of 3. So for example, if the number was 5, that would be a pile of 3 and a pile of 2. That doesn't work. Let's see. What's 1 less than this? 1 less than this would be 24. Oh, 3 goes into 24, so that would work. So 25 is still in the game. What's 1 less than 35? That would be 34. 3 does not go into 34, so that would not leave us a remainder of 1. So 35 has got to go. What's 1 less than 55? That would be 54. And the note is 5 plus 4 is 9. 3 goes into 9. So, or, so 3 goes into 54. So since 3 goes into 54, that would leave us a remainder of 1 as well. So we'll keep that one. What's 1 less than 65? That would be 64. 6 plus 4 is 10. 3 does not go into that number. What's 1 less than 85? 1 less than 85 is 84. 8 plus 4 is 12. So since 3 goes into 12, 3 goes into 84. So that one's OK. And then this is would be 94, and that doesn't work as well. So let's see. We're down to 85. Oops. Thought I changed the highlighter. We're down to, come on, highlighter. Can't seem to grab the highlighter. Maybe I got it. Gosh, bless it, stop. All right, now I got it. We're down to 85, 25, 55. Oh, one of those three has to be the answer. Okay, now we want to find out if it's going to be, uh, which one it's going to be. So, when I divide by 4... I have a remainder of 1. So let me come down here. Let's see what we got left. We've got the number 25. We've got the number 55. And we have the number 85. So let's see. If I had 25, and I had a remainder of 1. That would be a pile of 4, pile of 4, pile of 4. So the remainder, so again, I got to, because of this remainder of 1, I got to look at the number 1 before 25. So that would be 24. 
since 4 goes evenly into 24, if 25 was the number, I would have a remainder of 1. So this is still in the game. Let's look at the number before 55. That's 54. Does 4 go into 54? It does not. So this one is now out of the game. And 85, the number before 85 is 84. 4 does go into 84. Goes in 21 times. So since 4 goes in, that, if I had 84 coins, that would leave me even piles of 4, which would leave me 1 left over for this last one. So it looks like the answer could be either 85 or 25. So how many dimes does Penny have? So according to this, it looks like our work. Maybe we've got to look to see if there's anything else. Let's go back. Let's check. Is there anything we missed? Same thing here. We just put in piles of four. Try putting in piles of five. Find the, how many pins? So the answer to this question is she has either 25 coins or... 85 coins. Now I'm going to check this on my calculator just to triple check and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is take my calculator and I know this sounds dumb but I'm going to do 25 divided by 5 goes in evenly. 85 divided by 5 goes in evenly. Now that you should have already known. So now I'm going to do 85 or 25 divided by 2 I get 12. Oh, sorry. I get 12.5. So 12 times 2 is 24, which would leave me a remainder of 1 for 25. Take 85 and divide it by 2. I, oops. Take 85 and divide it by 2. I get 42. So 42 times 2 is 84, which would leave me one remainder to get to 85. So those are still good. Now let's do 25 divided by 3. I get, why do I keep doing that? It goes in 8 point something. So 8 times 3 is 24. So I can make 8 even piles of 3. I'd have 24 coins with 1 left over. If I take 85 and divide it by 3, I get 28.3. So 28 times 3 is 84. So I'd make 28 piles of 3 with 1 left over. Now the last one. 25 divided by 4, keep doing that, decimal, I get 6.25, so 6 times 4 is 24, so I can make 6 even piles of 4 with 1 left over, and then obviously 84 divided by 4 would be evenly, so I'd make 21 piles of 4 with 1 left over. So the answer is either 85 or 25 coins. We just can't tell the difference. All right, when I'm about to start lying, I don't drink Dunkin' Donuts coffee, but when I'm going to do a math problem about lying, mm, it helps bring out the truth. Nailed another commercial. All right, this question is going to give you a headache. By the way, I, on the last problem, I don't know how I said that at the end, but what I'm saying is we can't be we can't be 100% sure whether or not she has 25 or 85. So we have to say those are the possible answers. All right. So, let's see. This one's going to give us a headache. It says, Jim tells lies on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, but tells truths on all other days. Frida tells lies on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. She tells the truth on all other days. If they both say, yesterday I lied, what day is it today? <laughs> what? Okay, hold on a second. So we got to get organized. So here's how we're going to get organized. And we're going to start to try to eliminate probability. So we're going to say, okay, we got Monday. Oh, I better. Just, I'm going to start with Sunday. So we got Sunday. Oh, hold on. I'm going to. Get, I'm going to get my ruler out. Oh, I can't use my ruler. Son of a gun! I forgot I can't use a ruler on this computer. I'll try to do my best here. So Sunday. Monday. Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And let's see, we got Frida and Jim. So we got Jim and Frida. So what does it tell? Let's see. 
So let's 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 put some information in there. Jim tells lies on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Apparently probably does a little bit too much partying on Friday night and then just doesn't want to tell the truth about it for the rest of the weekend. But he tells the truth on all the rest of the day. So truth, 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 and truth. And I don't like this line here, so let me change that line. So Frida, let's do purple. Frida tells lies on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, but for the rest of the week, she tells the truth. So she tells truth, 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 and truth. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go through and see if we can figure out what happened. Let's say the day was Sunday. And I said yesterday I lied. So today is Sunday. So... Jim, he lies on Sunday, which, remember, what he said on Sunday was, yesterday I told, yesterday I lied. So let's take a look at Jim. What's the day before Sunday? You know what? Let's start on Monday. I think it'll be easier if we start on Monday because it'll be easier to watch. So let's start on Monday. So on Monday, Jim tells the truth. So... Did Jim tell the truth on Monday? Well, Monday, Jim said, yesterday I lied. He's telling the truth, and he lied the day before. So that's okay. So, so far, Monday is looking like pretty good. But Frida also tells the truth. Frida also tells the truth on this day. And she said, if she's on this day, and she said, yesterday I lied, that's not true. So that's a lie. So, can't be Monday. Let's go to Tuesday. On Tuesday, on Tuesday, Jim tells the truth. And, and what he's saying is, remember, the, the, the phrase he's saying is, yesterday I lied. Did he lie yesterday? No. So, no. That's a lie. That's not true. So it can't be Wednesday. So let's try Wednesday. Jim says, Jim on Wednesday tells the truth. So if he's telling the truth and he says, yesterday I lied, that's not true. So no, can't be Wednesday. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's try Thursday. No reason to even check freedom. On Thursday, Jim says, yesterday I lied. So Jim tells the truth. But that's not true, so it can't be Thursday. Let's try Friday. I'm running out of room here. All right, let's try Friday. On Friday, Jim lies. He likes to lie on Fridays. Now, what he said on Friday, the lie he told, the lie he told on Friday says the day before I lied. But didn't the day before he tell the truth? So the day before he he told the truth, but on this day he's lying. So what he should have said if he told the truth was the day before I told the truth. So this checks out. He lied about the day before. All right. So now we got to check Frida. Frida tells the truth on Friday. Why do I have all truth for Frida? I didn't realize I had all truth for Frida until just now. All right. When does Frida lies on? Oh, geez, I didn't even write. I did this wrong. So I should have got. So Frida lies on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But on these days, she tells the truth. Sorry about that. It really doesn't come into play in the problem because we didn't use Frida much. But now we're going to use Frida. So on Friday, Frida tells the truth. And the truth is, the day before, she lied. Oh, so she's telling the truth, that the, and then when she says, yesterday I lied, she's telling the truth. That checks out. So far, it looks like it's Friday. But we got to check. we got to keep checking. So now I'm going to check Saturday. Let's do Saturday. 
Jim on Saturday said he lies on Saturday. So he's lying. And he said, yesterday I told a lie, which is true. Yesterday he did tell a lie, but he's lying. So that means yesterday he told the truth, so that doesn't work out. So it can't be Saturday. And now the weird one, Sunday. So on Sunday, Jim lies, and he said, the day before I lied. But he's lying, so that can't be Sunday. So it must be Friday. That one I told you was going to give you a headache. I didn't even write it down right, but I think we're okay. All right, I actually kind of like these problems, but they're kind of weird and a little bit, you got to stay organized and you got to think a little bit, so that's kind of tough. So Emil and Olive live on a farm with their father, Gordon. One day, Emil asked his father, what happened to the cat we used to have? Olive overheard this and said, yeah, land. We used to have a horse, too. Gordon, when we used to have a horse, too. i got to stop using my voice to type for me. That tomcat and that old nag were no use. I traded them for our new goat. Emil said, hey, what sound? <laughs> that sounds like a good crypt arithmetic problem. Come on, Olive. Let's see if we can solve it. They wrote down Tom plus nag equals goat. Each letter stands for a digit, different digit, 0 through 9. No two letters stand for the same digit. Determine what each letter, letter represents. Okay, so this is how this, these kinds of problems go. We're going to take Tom, leave some space, plus nag. If we add those up, we're going to get goat. Oops. Now we have to think about placement, right? See how these all letters line numbers letters line up, letters line up, and then we've got these letters line up, and then we got this letter line up here. Okay. So we're gonna do this. I'm gonna write these out over here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's it. We got ten digits. There they are. Now, what do we know? We know that the T's are the same. We know that the G's are the same. We know that the O's are the same. We don't know what letter they are. The A's are the same. So we got a lot of the same letters here. I'm sorry. I'm going to put this here. So how are we going to figure out what this is? Well, here's because we went from a three digit number to a three digit number. Uh, and got a four-digit number, the first thing we know is that T plus N has to be greater than or equal to 10. Greater than or equal to 10. Now, the largest number that Tom could be, let's just assume that Tom was the largest number it could be. The largest number it could be is 999. It really couldn't because you can't reuse letters. But let's just say it was 999. And let's say nag was the largest possible number it could be. And it was 999. Now, we know it can't be. But let's just say it was. Well, if it was, this would be 1998. So the very largest goat could be is 1998. So what, we're tr the, what this gives us is that the biggest number this one could be is 1. It cannot be a 2. It cannot be. A, so it's got to be 1,000 something, not 2,000. So when you add up two three-digit numbers, it has to be less than 2,000. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us what we already know what G is. G has to be a 1. So G has to be a 1. So we're going to knock that off our list. So by that very measure, we know that G had to be a 1. All right. Now, what else do we know? What else do we know? We know that M plus G is T. This is an interesting one. 
O plus A equals A. Huh. How's that possible? O plus A equals A. Now, the only way that that's possible is if O equals zero. That's one way, right? Zero plus A equals, excuse me, zero plus A would be equal to A. But let's think. Is there another way? Let's say that, um, let's say that uh, M plus G equals something larger than 10. Then I would, if, if M plus T was greater than or equal to 10, then I would have a carry here, right? Wouldn't we have a little carry? We'd have a carry number here. And then I would have O plus A equals A. And how would that look? So that is a little bit more tricky to deal with this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try something. We're going to assume, now sometimes this work and sometimes it's other. We're going to assume that the O, the character O, equals the number zero. Okay, so I'm going to put a zero in here. So let's see if that will work for me. Let's see then. And we can't figure out what A is yet, but I'm going to try to move this over a little bit. Let's see. What does this give us? Well, we now know that T plus n equals 10, right? See, we have a 10 here. t plus n equals 10. Now, I, the reason I know that is because a cannot be larger than, because this is a 0, the largest that a could be is a 9. This whole thing, we're just assuming this isn't going to be a carry. This whole thing can only be bigger than, um, if, if the largest number that A could be would be a 9. So I can't put a 9. I would never have, a, there's not going to be a carry up here. So that tells me that T plus N equals 10. Okay. So what are all the ways I can get to 10? All the ways I can get to 10 are 1 and 9. But we can't use that because I already know that G is 1. So that's not, that's out. I can go 2 plus 8. I can go 3 plus 7, or I can go 4 plus 6. Those are all the ways to multiply, or excuse me, add up to 10. Oh, sorry, we got one more, 5 plus 5. But it can't be 5 plus 5 because the digits all have to be different, so we'll get rid of that one. That would mean equal to 10 too. So we're down to what three choices here for T and N. It's got to be one of those three choices. Let's see if we know anything else. All right, let's try this one. This is another one of these ones. Send plus more equals money. You can read through the, uh, even though I'm, I should say Marty, young Marty away college, extra cash. So send plus more equals money. So send plus more equals money. We know we're going to use 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Assume that there's no decimal point. Okay, that's not. Assume that there is a decimal point N and E, right? So, so we're going to send a couple hundred dollars, not $10,000, whatever. That's just, you don't need to know that. All right, what do we know? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to start with the idea 
Well, we got to know, we know M is 1. We have already know that from the last time, that M is 1. So M definitely has to be 1. Because if you add two four-digit numbers up, it can't be more than 10,000. It cannot be more than 10,000. I mean, it can't be more than 20,000. It has to be less than 20,000. So if you had 9,999 9, plus 9,999, it would be just under 20,000. So we know that M is 1. But we also know that we have a carry here. We have a two-digit number here. So that means that S has to be either an 8 or a 9. Now, why can it be an 8? The reason it can be an 8 is because... The reason it could be an 8 is because if I had a carry, so I know that S plus M has to equal 10 or 11. Wait, it can't equal 11 because if it equaled 11, then that means O and M and O would all have the same letter. So it can't equal 11. But it can, so it has to equal 10. There's two ways to do that. 8 plus 9 and a carry plus a carry would equal 10, or um, 9 plus 1 would, e would just equal 10. But we do know that, that it has to be 10, right? So we know that this has to be an O. Since M has to be a 1, the biggest this can be is a 0. So the only thing that's going to be is a 0. So we know that's a 0. Now, if, if that's a 0, then let's see. E plus zero, E plus zero has to equal N. Now, could it be a one N? Could it be one N and I have a carry? By one N, I mean like, let's say N was uh, 15. You know, it'd be one, five, and we'd carry the one, so N would really be five. But wait a second. If, if E, if, excuse me, if the O is the zero, if the O is the zero, and let's say this was in fact a nine, and we had a carry, then the biggest this could be is, then that would make 10 here, that would make this an, a zero, and I'd have a one, can't do it. If it was an 8, so there's no way that this is going to carry. So we know now that there's not going to be a carry, which eliminates 8 as a choice. So we got rid of this, and we got rid of this. And so we, now we know that S is a 9. Now we know that S is a 9. Okay. Oh, I thought, okay, I think I paused it. Okay, so let's see what else we know. We know that, we know that, oh, this is a, that O is a zero. And let's go back to this idea right here, right? E plus O equals N. In other words, but O is a zero, so E plus zero equals N. But E plus zero should equal E. E plus 0 equals E. That can't be true. Cannot be true because that would make E and N the same. So, we know that there has to be a carry up here because otherwise this would have to be an E. And I know that's not true. So we have to have a carry. Alright. That means then that N plus R has to be greater than 10. I'm not going to say it has to be equal to 10. It can't equal 10. In fact, it has to be actually, it has to be 11 or more. Actually, it has to be 12 or more. So I know that it has to be greater than or equal to 12. All right? So now, that, that, that normally that's going to, and that, well, that, that would give us a carry. So now here's where it's going to start getting a little cray cray. We know that n plus r has to be greater than 10. Or actually, let's try it. Let's do it this way. This is even better. n plus r has to equal e plus 10. 
because we have a carry, remember what a carry means. A carry means that whatever was here was greater than 10, but it's only a single digit. So let's say that single digit was 2, that would be 10 plus 2, which would be 12. You put the 2 down and carry the 1. So n plus r has to equal e plus 10. But what do we know here? We know that 1 plus e, let me erase that, we know that 1 plus e equals n. So 1 plus e equals n. Now if that's true then, I should be able to take this and put it in for n. So what would that give us? That would give us this new equation which would be 1 plus e plus r equals e plus 10. Well, if I cancel the e's off on both sides, I get 1 plus r equals 10, or r equals 9. But r can't equal 9 because s is 9. So what does that mean? Well, that means we got to go back to the drawing board, and now we have to say, wait a second, wait a second, there has to be a carry here as well. So, what does that leave us? All right, so now we know that's a carry. So what do we know? We know that, then now we have to go back to this. Now we have to go back to the fact that D plus E is equal to 10 plus Y. Whatever y is, let's say y is a 3, so that would be 13, right? Carry the 1. So we know that has to be, in fact, true. Let me stop and I'll be back for just a second. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo what I just did. Let's see if I can undo all this. Because uh, I didn't want to erase that because I forgot. Oops. Let me re-undo. Okay, so we know we have a 1 now. So when we went back, if we go back to this information right here, we now know that 1 plus n, because we're now going to add in the extra carry, 1 plus n plus r equals e plus 10. And if we replace the if we replace the n with 1 plus e, what we end up with is 1 plus 1 plus e equal, oh, excuse me, plus r equals e plus 10. The e's cancel. So I get 2 plus r equals 10. So r equals 8. And there we have r. Now we know that r is 8. Woo! That was a lot. So now we have r is 8. Okay, now that we got r equals 8, now I'm going to get rid of all this. Now I, I forgot I shouldn't have gotten rid of it, first of all. All right, so let's see what we have here. Let's see. Go back, erase this. Erase this comma. Oops, that's a 9. We know we got two carries. So we got to find out what e is. So what do we got? We know that n can't be a 1, and n can't be a 0, because we already used those. We know it can't be an 8. So what can we do? We can use, let's say we made it a 2. Well, 2 plus 8 would be 10. That would make e 0, so it can't be a 2. So right now, it looks like e can be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or 7. 2, 3, 4. But it can't be 8 or 9 because we already used those. It can't be 1 or 0 because we've already used those. Wait, it can't be 2. So because we just showed that it can't be 2. because So it's got to be 3, 4, 5, 6 or 7. So we know that n has to be, oh excuse me, not r, but n. n has to be n has to be equal 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. Uh, can't be 8 or 9. Okay, so let's see. 
Uh, we know we have to have a carry. So I think what we're going to do is let's say let's say e was a three. I'm going to do this in what color can I do this in? I wish I had a really crazy color. I'm going to say e is three. Weird color. So if e was a three, now remember we have a carry that make or if n was a three, we'd have one plus three, which is four, plus eight, which is 12, that'd make this a two. That would make this a two, and that would make this a three. Ah, see how we got three? So that can't be, because we'd have a, Oh wait, that would work. Three and three, and would have to be three. So that actually kind of works. Hmm, that actually works. But wait a second, e would be two. That'd make this e two. Now, if the e was two, remember we have to have a carry here. That means that d plus e would have to be greater than or equal to 11. It has to be greater than or greater than or equal greater than or equal to 13. Actually greater than or equal to 14 because we already used a 3. So it would have to be greater than or equal to 14. And there's no way to do that. I mean this has to be bigger than 10 and if e is a 2 that would make d at, at minimum an 8 or a 9. So that's just not going to work. So 3's out. So we're going to cross off three. So let's make it a four. Let's try four. So that didn't work, that didn't work, that didn't work. So now it's a process of elimination, right? We're going to try some elimination stuff. Four. Four plus one is five, plus eight is 13. That would make this three. That would make this three. That would make this four. That works. But E is three. Now, if e is 3, then this would have to be 7. can't be 8 or 9. This would have to be 7. So let's see. 7 plus 3 is 10. That would make this a 0. But it can't be 0. So it can't be 4. 4 is out. All right. Let's try 5. Let's try 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 plus 8 is 14. We'll put a 4 here. We'll put a 1 here. Oops, sorry. I already carried the 1. Uh, e is 4. So 1 plus 4 is 5. That looks like it's working. That makes E 4, which would make this have to be... Well, this could be... It couldn't be a 6, but it could be a 7. It could be a 7, that would make that 11, but wait a second, that means I'd have another 1 here and another 1 here, and that ain't going to work either. So we've got to get rid of that. So it's not 5 either. I'm, gu I'm guessing it's probably got to be 7 then, right? We've got to probably get to 7. So let's go with N is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7, 7 plus 8 is 15. Carry the 1, we get 15, 6. So that would have to be 6. E is 5. Now remember, D plus E has to be greater than, it can't be 11, So, but it could be greater than or equal to 12 now. Let's see if we can get to 12. That would make D 7. 7 would make Y 2. I think it would work. I think we got it. I think that's it right there. Uh, let's see. Let's make sure this works. So what we have here is it looks like nine five six seven. Nine five six seven plus one zero eight five. Let's add that up. We get twelve one. Fifteen one. Sixteen or 6, no carry, and then we'd have 10. Now let's make sure all the numbers match. S is 9, 
M is one. Zero, O is zero. Yeah, there we go. There's one of the answers. I like that answer. Okay, there we go. We got it. Hey, that's a tough one. Sorry about that, kids. All right, kids, here we go. Last one. Sorry about that last one. That one's rough. This one's okay, though. And it's kind of hard, though. Let's see. It's got a trick to it at the end, I think. So Seymour owns his own business. He makes deli sandwiches, which he wraps to retain the freshness, and then distributes what in the world happened when this printed. Well, I think we're good. What? It's weird. We oh. Oh, it's, it got, oh, it's all right. It's fine. One morning, Seymour suffered an unfortunate accident. He slipped on the floor and banged his head. He could. He seemed to be fine, except that when he was out on his delivery route, he couldn't remember which streets the sausage and meatball combo stores were on. The streets were number one through street 154 street, and he remembered that the two fast stop stores were on streets whose numbers added up to 50. He also remembered that the Circle B store was two streets away from one of the other fast stop stores. He remembered that uh, he called the sausage and meatball combo his prime favorite because all three stores were on prime number streets. Unfortunately, the information he remembered wasn't quite enough to get him to the stores. He called his friend Gus, and while well, let's just say Gus remembered that he told him the product of the three numbers, I guess that was enough for Gus, and he just did a little bit of work and he found out the answer. So we got to come up with some lists. I think the biggest thing we're going to start with is this. Let me get to my drawing is that the two fast stop stores were on the numbers who added up to 50. So I think let's start with that. But they were all on prime street, so we're going to start with only prime numbers. So, call it fast stop one. And it's a heck of a straight line. Fast stop two. So, we got to do nothing but prime numbers. I could do 1 and 49, but 49 is not prime and neither is 1. 2 is prime, but 48 is not. 3 is prime and 47 is prime. 4 is not prime. 5 is prime, but 45 is not. Six, so no even. So let's just skip all evens because those aren't prime numbers except for 2. So let's go 7 and 43 I think could work. 9 is not prime, 11 and 39, but 39 is not prime, 13 and 37, 15 is not prime, 17 is prime, but 33 is not, 19 is prime, and 31 is prime, 21, 23, and 27 is not prime. 25 is not prime. So I think that's where we're at, right? It's got to be one of these. right? I could have started listing them all out, but this helps me out. I only listed the prime numbers. So we're down to 3 and 47, 7 and 43, 13 and 37, and 9 and 31. Or we could have 47 and 3, 43 and 7, 37 and 13 or 31 and 19 right I don't know which one's which now what else did it say it said that the circle B was two streets away from one of the other fast stop stores so let's see what we have let's do fast stop one fast stop two and the circle B. So let's see. If we chose 3 and 47, then let's say it was two streets away from fast stop 2, then it would be could be 45, or I could do 3 and 47 and 2 away from 47, going the other way would be 49. Or I can do 47 and 3, 
and two away from three would be five, and two away from three would be one. So that's what I get from this list. But here we got a problem. 45 is not prime, so it can't be this one. 49 is not prime, so it can't be this one. And one is not prime. So from that, I only get this as a possibility. So now let's try the next one. Let's try 7, 43. Now we're going to do four of these as well. 7, 43, 7, 43, 43, and 7. I don't know why I'm switching those. I guess it, it doesn't matter. 43 and 7. So let's see. Two away from 43 would be either 41 or 45. Two away from 7 would be 9 or 5. 9 is not prime. 45 is not prime. 41 is prime. And so is this one. So those are, that's that one. Let's keep going. Now we're going to do 13 and 37. I'll do this in purple. 13, 37, 13, 37, 37, 13, 37, 13. I'm run out of room. Uh, let's see. Two away from 37 will be 39. That's not prime. Two away from 37 will be 35. Lower. That's not prime. Two away from 13 will be 11. That's okay. Two away from 13 the other way will be 15. That's not prime. All right. We got one group left. I'll just do it up here. Uh, fast stop one. Should do it in smaller. Fast stop two. And circle B. So what do we got? We got four of these here too, right? So we got a 19 and 31. So we got 19, 31, 19, 31, 31, 19, 31, 19. Two away from 31 would be 33. That's not prime. Two away from 31 will be 29. That's prime. So those would all be prime. That would work. Two away from 20, 19 will be 21. 21 is not prime. Two away from 20, 19 the other way would be 17. That's prime. So we've got, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different ways. So here's all, I'm running out of room. Let me get these off to the side here. I'll, do, I'll start working in white now. I'm going to write all these down over here in white. So here's all my possibilities. Fast stop one, fast stop two, and the circle B. So I can go 43, 47, 3, and 5. Those are all prime. I can go 43, 7, and 5. Those are all prime. I can go 37, 13, 11. 37, 13, 11. Or I can go 31, 19, and 17. So those are, are those only four? One, two, three, four, five. There should be five. 31, 19, 31. Oh, there it is. 19, 31, and 29. So those are all the five possibilities based on so far the facts. Now, we also got this one last piece of information from Gus. And Gus told... His friend Gus told him that he remembered that the product of streets were the stores, I should say stores, were, were on. But Gus could only remember the last digit of the product. So he couldn't remember the product, but he remembered the last digit. So I guess the only thing I left to do is take the product of these and see what that gives us and see if that helps us at all. So let me grab the dumb machine. Where's my calculator? Here's my calculator. So take my calculator out, and I'm going to do 47 times 3 times 15. So 47 times 3 times 15, 21, 15. 43 times 7 times 5, 1505. 37 times 13 times 11. 5291. 31 times 
19 times 17. 10, oh, 13. I think I'm missing one of the choices. I'm going to go back and look. Uh, 1931, 19 times 30. I think there was supposed to be six. I don't know why I missed one. I feel like uh, 17081. 17081. Uh, there was one missing, I think. Let me see. I thought there were six. One. Ah, here's the other one. I missed circling it. 743.41. So let's do that in white. 743.41. So 7 times 43 times 41. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Now, what Gus told him was the last digit. And apparently that was enough to figure out what street it's on. Well, if you notice, these two are fives, this one and these two are ones. This is the only one that has a different digit at the end. Therefore, this, 31, 19, and 17, must be the right answer. Wow, that was kind of tricky. So, fast stop 1 is on 31, fast stop 2 is on 19, and the circle B is on 17. And that finishes the problem from this chapter.